right. Oh, I like that, Jim. Oh, look at that. Love gets loosened up by the 91 of Majeski. Yellow is out, Rich. Caution is out. Hang on a second. We got a big one over in turn one, and it's Crump. Oh, man. And Jesse Love holding on to third. Pollard is up to six. Oh, Majeski gets turned around. And the caution is out. That was on the back straightaway here. Butcher to the pits. Now we'll find out what the problem is with the 28. Fuel going in. Out of fuel for Butcher. Wow. Could that have been Majeski's in, uh, issue as well coming well, up in turn two? Maybe he burped. Could have been. Fuel going in on our race leader, Ty Majeski's number 91. 28 ran out of fuel too, bud. Jesse Love in the number one slot with Mason on his outside as we go back to green here. Oh, oh and Paul gets loosened up by Gio Ruggiero. Hang on, Gio. I wouldn't know. And Butcher sliding through the infield. Ty Majeski back to the inside here in the 91. He's right alongside of Bubba Pollard. He's going to take second away from the driver from Georgia. Ruggiero pulling up on the racetrack as well. He's out of fuel in the front stretch. Popping the engine on and off under caution. Might have helped him maintain the lead here as his teammate Gio Ruggiero runs out of fuel. Jesse Love will win that second stage. And Ty Majeski back down on Pit Road, Jim, and smoke pouring out from underneath that car. Ran out of fuel, got spun down the back stretch, and oh, Ty Majeski's climbing out. He's done. Bubba Pollard trying to make something happen on the outside of Jesse Love as we go down into three. They're door to door. We're in starting to slip already a little bit. Everybody with fresh tires and full fuel loads. Jesse Love came to the Toledo Speedway. Qualified it, lined it up, and he'll win the 35th running of the Class City 200. Yeah, man, I'm just so happy I finally won a super late race again. I feel like I, uh, I feel like I don't do a good job in these things. I don't know what it is, but um, you know, I finally think I, that we all did a good job as a team tonight. And you know, me and Bond, we weren't. I don't think we were the fastest all night tonight, but we stuck with what we thought was right, which was make the thing tight as heck and let let them everybody else come to us when they get free. And uh, man, I think that's just what happened. So. Yeah, obviously we were pretty free the last stage, and you know I think we lucked out going green the checkered, and obviously getting track position and things like that. But just gotta stay in the fight all night, and want to thank JBL and Harmon, Trent, Jack, Irving. Uh, it's my girlfriend's birthday today, so happy birthday if she's watching. She's probably not, but um, but yeah, just so pumped up, and uh, thanks Dustin for watching the dog, and yeah, just ready to get back to the next one. Another great race for the ASA Stars National Tour at Toledo Speedway, their eighth event of the season. Moving on to Winchester here this afternoon. Jesse Love, mm -hmm. not with us this weekend. He's a busy man, young man, rising star, one of the best in short track racing. So much talent. We get a chance to cover him on Motor Racing Network and the Arkham Menard Series. He's a two-time ARCA West champion. He's won the Arkham Menard National Championship this year. I get a chance to see him on my home track, Millbridge Speedway. He's out there running a micro sprint every Wednesday night. This kid has got so much talent. Jesse Love, one of those names we're going to be watching on Sunday afternoons for a long time to come. Absolutely. We've got a lot of stars here today that I think can be said much the same as we did a year ago, the 2022 running of the Winchester 400. Each and every year, always exciting here, and it always comes down to those final laps, and it's not always the best driver or the best car that wins the race. You just got to be there at the end, put yourself in position for that late going. This is about survival this afternoon. Yes, you've got to be good. Yeah, you got to have, but surviving strategy, it's going to be so much fun. It really is. And yeah, we're going to add another chapter to that rich, rich history that, that we left here last year. Winchester 2022 highlights of the 400. Let's take a look. Here we go. 400 laps at Winchester underway. The green is out. <laughs> Off of turn two, it is Roderick into the lead. Heim drops in line in second, racing for third. Chandler Smith on the inside, on the outside, Jake Garcia. One spot, Smith. His car strong early on, comes up, nearly making contact with the inside of the 35 of Garcia. That's the thing about trying to run the inside line at Winchester. You're going to be tight against the car to the outside. Get as much momentum as you can. He'll continue to do that down through turns three and four. Wheel to wheel off of the fourth corner. Garcia, the momentum off of turn four, will lead again at the line at the completion.
completion of lap 114. But he continues to hold off the 18 of Chandler Smith. How long can that last? That's the question. Gotta watch Garcia on the outside. You try to mark that corner, get a good run off the exit. Oh, oh and that's no. what I was saying is watch out for the contact. No, Chandler Smith again. Later, you see the top four right there. Nasty. Whoa, look out back. Straight away, Sammy Smith. Multiple spins on the back stretch for Smith. Locks her down. Goes Nassie down into turn number one. Clears once again Hine. Second place is up for grabs. How about Hine, man? What a day he's had in that 69 machine trying to battle on the inside. But Cole Butcher battling back after a big struggle in that last long green flag run. Start to stretch his lead over Nassie, who's at this point just hanging on. Because he has probably another set of right sides that he can put on that car and make it fast as it was. Oh, contact Hine. Oh, trouble Hine. sideways. Hind up into the wall. Hind up into the wall in the 69. Unfortunate break. He had just made a little bit of contact with Nassie. Unintentional racing deal type situation coming off the exit of turn number two. 130 to go. 129 at the line. Clean restart off of four. And Sawalich challenges down into turn one with the 53 of Cole Butcher. And that young driver, he was fast here Labor Day weekend, fast here on Friday in the Pro Late Model, and now running for an opportunity to try to lead the Winchester 400. Watch Pinellas Park, Florida driver Steven Nassi in the 51. He has moved up into the third spot. He's gotten around Garcia. Casey Roderick will try to come along as well. They're on fresher rubber than the three that they're challenging. Boy, Roderick came off the wall middle of the backstretch. Garcia, fortunately for the 35, was down about a car length and a half, and there was no contact there. Could have been nasty just down to the edge of the screen. Casey Roderick popped into our screen momentarily there. It's going to be a three-car battle up front if this continues. He's on the rear bumper heading into turn one. No contact made. He goes to the inside. Here comes Nassi. Another challenge for the lead. What a big run off of turn four. That's the best that Nassi's looked off the fourth turn. And he did exactly what he needed to do. Stay in line and nearly contact again on four. He stayed alongside on the front stretch this time. Huge move. And he goes down into one and two. A new leader with 35 to go. Pinellas Park, Florida driver Steven Nassi. Behind only any Van Meter with four. And he'll look to be on his way to his second Winchester 400 win. Just one more lap to go. Half a lap now down the back stretch as the white is waved into turn three, racing to four. He could almost coast at home with nearly a four second lead from Pinellas Park, Florida. Steven Nassi, a two time Winchester 400 winner. Last year's winner of the Winchester 400 has been one of the best and most consistent drivers over the last six years, completing all the laps, leading in just about all of those races. In fact, leading and winning a few years ago over 300 laps, almost 400 laps, over 390 laps, Stephen Nassie. But last year he wasn't the fastest car, but he put himself in position at the end. And I think what's amazing about that, when you look at Stephen Nassie, that becomes a two-time winner of this thing. He joins Mark Martin, Mike Eddy, Gary St. Amant as two-time winners of this race. Those are legends. And so Nassie is in that category and looking for more here today. But you're right. There's multiple ways. He won it by dominating a few years ago. Last year he did it by managing this race and when i say managing this race managing a lot of things including the tires it is a challenge that we have here with the hoosier tires but a lot of optimism over there as well and speaking of tires new tire for yep. 2023 yeah they ran a cra super series race here in september for labor day weekend and they weren't necessarily happy with what they had so the folks with the with the asa and hoosier went to work and we hit the ground they, they did a test and they still weren't happy but they felt they had a really good direction they hit the ground yesterday and this is where we just talked about that practice session when everyone left here last night, especially the right side tires, everyone's like, all right, we have something here. So it is a new tire. Yes, it's going to be tire management. This is an old worn out racetrack, and this is 400 laps. It's an old worn out racetrack, 400 laps. We're going to have to manage tires, but there's a lot more optimism about the tire that we have here for this afternoon's race. Absolutely, that we do. One of the drivers has been able to manage his tires and manage his car, get it there at the end, avoid the attrition, is a NASCAR driver, Noah Gregson. Noah had a chance to watch some video and explain to everyone how you get around Winchester Speedway's made two starts in this race. Today will be his third. What's up, everyone? We're here at the Winchester 400 here in Winchester, Indiana. 
and I'm driving the number 30 Casey Jones Racing Super Late Model this weekend for the Winchester 400. It's going to be one heck of a time, but let's take you for a few laps around this racetrack. Coming off of turn number four, there's a big bump, big swell bump. you got to have your hand set right into one. You land, big bump, run the middle of the top of the racetrack, turn it down wide open on the gas all the way off of turn number two. You get a little bit of shade down the back straight away. Enter in turn three, it's pretty smooth on entry. You can arc it, but it's a little bumpy as well. Coming back down the front straight away, the driver, this is the most sensation of speed that any of these racetracks I've ever been to has. This is the highest, top of the list. This place is the world's fastest half mile and it's the world's fastest half mile for a reason because you feel like you're going a thousand miles around this racetrack, but uh, the cars are gonna be a handful. It's gonna be a long race. We're gonna have some fun out there and put on one heck of a show for you guys. You know, Steven Nassi, uh, we, we talked about his great runs here at the Winchester 400. Noah Gregson can be much the same. He only has two starts here. He's been very good in both of them. He starts 10th today. Yeah, and Noah is on the comeback trail. We know the ins and outs that Noah has had over the last few years, found himself outside of NASCAR, now working his way back in, and has uh, picked up a ride with Rhett Jones uh, running that car. Uh, they've ran a couple times this year, and they really feel like they're getting his footing, getting him back behind the wheel, and he's looking for some great things. There's a lot of optimism in that camp, and you're right. He's a 27 champion of this race so he knows what it needs to take as he tries to brick by brick Winchester 400 would be a big brick build that career back up to to maybe get to full-time racing again as well we've talked about attrition we've talked about tires one thing we haven't really touched on yet engines engines are pretty important here they got to make it to the finish of 400 laps and they're in the throttle so long here with a high banking a lot of guys run like a crate package or run like a you know, the, the typical package that most of the cars run. One driver in today's field, kind of old school racer, Albert Francis, even though he's young, he builds his own engine, Steve. I love this story. I really do. I think there's so many ways to go races, racing. And when you see a young guy like Albert who's out here building his own engines, I just think it's really, really cool what he does and the challenge he has here today. He comes from an engine builder family. Albert Francis, driver of the 33 car today. My dad always had people driving for him because he's always owned race cars. And I guess people that get into racing don't really have a choice. They kind of just like it. And then once you're in, it's, it's even worse. So, Hi, I'm Albert Francis from Painesville, Ohio. I drive the 33 Super Late Model. I decided to go ASA Stars Racing because my dad, he used to run it back in the 80s and 90s. So we definitely thought it'd be cool going from CRA to go try and tour with the ASA series, maybe get some longer races because um, I feel like the longer races suit more of my driving style. Uh, the Winchester 400, it's definitely a race like no other because Winchester's a racetrack like no other. It's hard on equipment, hard on drivers, it's a long race. A lap around Winchester is different from other places because like say you go to Toledo, the side g-forces are so much more on like the side of your body. You go to Winchester and you're like down in the seat. So drag racers, they do quarter mile poles. We're at a half mile racetrack. We're doing 800 quarter mile drag race passes. So it's hard on valve springs, valve train. And you gotta remember we're always on the chip too. So it's harmonics and stuff. It's just hard on driveline. Why do you know so much about this engine stuff? Well, I, that is my job. I, I work on them day in, day out. It's kind of what I love to do. I like working on the cars. I like working on the engines. It's just kind of kind of my thing. I do everything from like machine work throughout the whole entire process, line honing, line boring, dyno them, assemble. It's not really that much work to me because I like doing it, but definitely makes you think about doing things because you're like, man, I gotta fix that when I get home. Or you know the classic movie reel from Days of Thunder? Look, a panel we don't gotta fix. Yeah, it's kinda like me in the seat. Have you had to fix much this year? Yeah, unfortunately. A lot of dumb luck, just parts failures, and Kakana, we had a fire, which was a gear lube fire and a getting on the brake rotor, so that was different. So when they jacked up to put rights on under the caution, they put all the gear lube in the left hub because the axle seal went bad because we run really small diameter axles and it got it all in the hub and when we went back green, the g-forces, because we don't run actual wheel seals, they're like air seals, so like all the gear lube was coming out the hub 
right onto the road or onto the tire. They wanted me to get to the break, but it didn't happen, so. I mean, we've had a couple good runs, like Madison, we run seventh. I was on my way to third at Toledo, had a radiator hose pinhole. Just a lot of them races were like, I break a lot of parts that I've never seen break before. Just kind of one of them endurance things that it brings out the weak spots in race cars. It's just really hard to find stuff that breaks, so I've came with a system now, I just mileage all my parts out and just get rid of them. It's, it's definitely more expensive, but it's more expensive to go to the racetrack and fall out of a race, so. What a special bond for a driver like Albert Francis, a young kid from Northeast Ohio, Painesville, their hometown. I have known Albert since he was knee high to a grasshopper uh, back when he and his family helped run Barberton Speedway there in Northeast Ohio. And, and Albert working with his dad in the engine shop, Francis Engineering, building his engines, learning a lot about that, and then growing into the race car driver that he is today. You know, family is challenging. When you're in a competitive business, like engine building, like racing, it is challenging, and it's so neat to see what him and his father do. Success, pro late model champion over at Jennerstown Speedway. Lots and lots of wins across the board over in that direction. And uh, it is. It really is challenging. But a father and son effort is tricky and is challenging, but they are really making it work. And, again, I just love that hands-on approach that Albert brings to this race. We have hands-on, we have young superstars, we have veteran racers, we have a little bit of everything, and Albert brings that hands-on, blue-collar effort to this out this track, and he's, he's going to be fun to watch this afternoon. Albert, just 21 years of age, he's eighth in the ASA Stars National Tour points. You know, his dad used to field cars for other drivers in the ASA National Tour back many years ago. Made a lot of starts over at Toledo Speedway and now Winchester Speedway today for this 400. Legendary race car drivers. There's been a lot of them race the Winchester 400. We talked about Mike Getty, Bob Seneker, Terry Seneker. The list goes on and on. Rusty Wallace, Kenny Wallace. Mark Martin is one of those, and uh, he made some starts here at the High Banks. Yeah, Mark Martin, another father-son operation early in the day, that's for sure. Mark and his dad raced together for some time and, until it really didn't work for them, and that's the challenge of it. But Mark Martin, so much success, went to NASCAR, came back to ASA, and built those building blocks at places like here in Winchester. He's a two-time winner of this race, 85 and 86. And so, yeah, Mark Martin, a big part of the rich history of this race. Rob Albright had a chance to talk about Mark Martin and his start at Winchester. So my dad raced, um, he owned a small town Lincoln Mercury dealership in Noblesville, Indiana, just north of Indianapolis. And he raced on weekends and this is back in the 50s and they called them super modifieds, but they were really the forerunners of what became sprint cars. So some of my best memories of Winchester uh, were going with my dad to watch midgets and sprint cars at, at Salem and Winchester Speedways in Indiana. Um, and I can, I can remember a younger brother who wasn't, didn't have his driver's license yet said, hey, can you take me to the race at, at Winchester this weekend? And I said, Rick, I, I don't, is it midgets or sprints or is it a split show or what? I don't rem remember seeing there was anything. He said, no, it's a stock car race. I said, Rick, I don't want to go to a stock car race. And he said, well, no, I, I just want to go, and I think you'll like it. He said it's it's called the Dry Power 400, and it's ASA stock cars. And he said there's this 17-year-old kid, a uh, little kid from Arkansas named Mark Martin, and they say he's the next great thing. So, so I went to I went to Winchester Speedway. He didn't win the race as a rookie that day, but I just watched the way Mark Martin went about his business. He had a tape to the left rear fender of his race car was a list probably 50 items long of items that needed to be checked and then to the right were two more columns and two and two guys were assigned to check everything that was on that list and i thought this guy is really serious about this and not only did he was he a huge talent not only did he prove that uh when he finally got to the the, the highest level but his success in winning championships uh, is amazing Mark Martin, legendary race car driver, NASCAR Cup Series over the years, was so good even to that last checkered flag that he took in his racing career. But it all started 
when you look back in this ASA National Tour, now the ASA Stars National Tour bringing it back, and we could be talking about one of these guys in today's field much the same 30 years from now. I'll be surprised if we're not because this is such a challenge with it. And when you look at the history, you look at the history and how it ties into NASCAR Cup Series drivers. Ted Musgrave, a former winner of this race. David Stremme, a former winner of this race. Kyle Busch, a winner of this race. This race has been one of those. It's a crown jewel race. But because of the distance, and, and I spent a lot of time with Kenny Wall, uh, and he talked about the big thing, and this was back before Jeff Gordon and Ryan Newman and Thursday Night Thunder. This was back when ASA was the key to the top levels of NASCAR because there were 400 lap races, what NASCAR was a lot of as well. And so consequently, this race and the history of it really, really transcends into the biggest form of racing because it is such a challenge. And guy that wins this race is going to earn that, that's for sure. Every year, whoever wins this race, and you can look at that list, and you mentioned a lot of the names, those drivers are all very, very good drivers. They might not have been the fastest car on that day they won, but they made that car be there at the end, put themselves in position to win, and that's exactly what happened. This place has so much meaning to so many drivers. A guy like Mark Martin, you know this, has a lot of meaning to him. Rusty Wallace, Kenny Wallace, Mike Eddy, Bob Seneker, all of those names, this place means a lot. A guy like Steven Nassi, you think this place means a lot to him with what he's done here, Noah Gregson? They're here because of that. We had a chance to talk to a lot of different legendary drivers, NASCAR stars. Maybe they don't get a chance to come here and compete anymore, but they get a chance to talk about it and what Winchester has meant to them over the years. I'm going to take a look at that piece right now. But Winchester is, I mean, that, that is a beast of its own. And we've, we've unfortunately through the years, now we haven't had any, any problems in recent years, but it, it was proven to be a very stern taskmaster to, to several folks whose careers were ended at Winchester Motor Speedway, but it's a spectacular place. Yeah, I mean, it's really a Bristol with uh, a lot more character and a lot lot more bumps and nicks in the wall. And you, you run up on against the fence, you know, by the end of the race when the track rubbers in and um, the, the wall isn't very even. So it can really catch you uh, and, and catch you by surprise and you can get into it and ruin your race. My first trip up there, I think I was like... 14 or 13 you know that was uh that that was a lot <laughs> for me to, to go up there just a you know a high banked half mile track it's a it's just a tough track and a place that uh can be intimidating i love winchester it's probably one of my favorite racetracks uh reminds you a lot of what we get to do today at bristol just attack kind of place really fast a lot of load and a lot of speed and and also a lot of attrition as well what Winchester is and what that speedway means to the town uh, was really, really cool to learn about and see. And uh, obviously the history, and I made some laps out there and I had Newman driving me, which was scary. So if you can put down 400 good ones in a super, that's a, that's a pretty big day for anyone. Winchester Speedway, a lot of meaning to a lot of different drivers over the years. Guys that got a chance to compete here. Maybe it was just one time. Maybe it was numerous times. But they saw their stars, their heroes when they were youngsters growing up. As did I watching them on the ASA Stars National Tour. Now, when you look at the young drivers that have won races this year, Ty Majeski leading the standings. He's going to be one of those legendary drivers going down in history, one of the best in short track racing. Casey Roderick, not here today. He won that season opener at Five Flag Speedway, but the list of winners this year, crazy among the ASA Stars National Tour. Bubba Pollard, Gio Ruggiero, one of the drivers in today's field. Cole Butcher, he'll be starting from the front row today, the pole. He got that redraw. Spot number one, Jesse Love. We talked about his win earlier this year as well at Toledo in the most recent race, number eight. Just one race remains after today to set the champion. Right now, that's Ty Majeski in the points lead right behind him. In the second point spot is Cole Butcher. Those two drivers today will keep an eye on them as they try to make their names in history and win their first Winchester 400 and maybe get their way toward the championship for the ASA Stars National Tour. Gio Ruggiero in today's starting field. A young kid trying to make his name in history. He's won some big races in late model racing. If he would win the Winchester 400, that would be his biggest win. 
We had a chance to talk to Gio Ruggiero and about Winchester Speedway and about his career and what he wants to do over the next couple of years. My name is Gio Ruggiero. I'm 17 years old and I drive the 22 Super Late Model for Donnie Wilson Racing. Probably five years ago now, my uncle took me to a racetrack um, in Massachusetts called Seekonk Speedway. Ever since then, I, I really wanted to do it, so I asked my mom if I could get a, uh, a go-kart, and she told me no, and, and my dad, he said yes, so we ended up and we got a, we got a Bandolero car. I went from Bandos, I did probably two years in a Bando, two years in a Legend. My biggest progression was from a pro to a super. I only did one year in a pro, and then I, I'm, you know, in the super now. Um, but I think that's probably been the biggest. Even though it's the same car, I think you know that extra horsepower has probably been the biggest difference for me so far. Just really, you know, learning how to manage tires um, and, and manage the race because the the races are a lot longer as well. You know, 400 laps compared to, you know, a pro race being 100. Definitely had a rough start at Speed Weeks, but I think we kind of rebounded and, and came back and. I feel like, you know, Hickory, um, we won there and had some momentum after that. So I feel like we kind of turned the year around. And I really started to understand more of, you know, how I needed to race the Super compared to a pro car, how I needed to be in the, the end of the race and, you know, not burn up the tires. And, and once I kind of learned that, I felt like we were a lot better. Uh, you know, Winchester's definitely a, a tough track. I would probably just say hold on, honestly. Uh, first lap out there, I remember. That's what I was doing. My first ever lap, and it was in a pro car at Winchester. I was just holding on. Just everything's so fast, it's, it's hard to process first time out. The two tracks where I didn't breathe my first time out was Winchester and Slinger. Um, I just held my breath because, you know, Slinger's another short track, but the, the banking there is just, you're going around so fast. I feel like my, my main goal is, you know, to make it to the Cup Series and be able to race on, on Sundays. Uh, but for super late models right now, I think the biggest thing would be to win you know, a race like the Winchester 400 or the Snowball Derby or the All-American 400, one of those three, or hopefully all three of them. This guy, William Swalich, the ARCA East Series champion, and William, when we look at this race, when we look at it, uh, just what does this race mean to you? Yeah, I mean, it's a really prestigious race. I ran this race last year, got third. Uh, I thought that was a pretty good run and kind of hoping to make it a little better today. What types of things, This we've, we've talked in our pre-race show about this being survival. What types of things do you as a driver kind of anticipate, especially the first half, first two-thirds of this race? Um, really just saving tires and setting your own pace. Um, obviously, a lot of stuff can happen in this long of a race. Um, stuff can fall off, stuff can break, so you really want to preserve your car for the last 100 or 50 laps. You're a young driver that is climbing the ladder. We've talked about so many guys like Mark Martin, Ted Musgrave, Kyle Busch, guys that have won this race. What would it mean to you to add the Winchester 400 to your resume? Yeah, I mean, to add my name this early uh, in my career would be pretty cool, and if not, we just keep coming back and trying again. Uh, no doubt about it. It is going to be fun to see. It's William Swalich, one of the drivers we're going to be watching here today, looking around to see if we can find any other of these rascals down here running all over the place as far as this goes. Come on over here. Let's go over here. We're going to catch up. We're going to catch up with a former winner of this race, Noah Gregson, ready to go here today, the Rhett Jones Racing Car. Noah, we just talked to William Swalich about what it would mean to win this race. What does it mean to win this race as a guy who's done it before? Uh, it's a big one, Steve. It's it's one of the crown jewels, and it's crown jewel season. So you got this, you got uh, the Nashville All-American 400, and then Snowball Derby, obviously. So to be able to come back to Winchester, I haven't been here since 2017, six years. So it's good to be back with this Casey Jones racing team and just having a lot of fun. This is a worn-out track. Someone asked me earlier, how does it compare to Bristol? Has more banking than Bristol here. It's it's a lot more worn out and uh, it's got a lot of character. So that being said, it's fun to be back. There's a lot of fans in the stands and hopefully we put on a good race for everyone. Had some practice yesterday and you say you're feeling pretty good about the car. What about your car makes you feel like uh, you got the piece you can race with here today? Oh, it's a long race. It's a long race and uh, fortunately being able to win this race in the past, it, it gives me the experience of knowing what it does take. And you just got to stay on the lead lap all day. You can go a lap or two down uh, and, and still make it up. Obviously, you don't want to, but uh, just staying on the lead lap, not abusing your equipment. There will only be four to six, maybe eight cars on the racetrack on the lead lap so, um, towards the end of the race. So just staying out of trouble, keeping your car in one piece, and having a, 
a good race car to go race at the end at, with those last 50 laps. So that's, that's kind of my strategy. My goal is just keep it clean and, and have a piece for the last 50 laps and then go race it. Wish you the best. Thank you. I appreciate it, guys. There we go. Noah Gregson, the 2017 champion of this race. Man, I'll tell you what, that really helped him climbing the ladder and really, really catapulted him into the next level of racing across the board. I can see if we can find someone else down here. Got all these drivers around. Let's go. Come over here. Come on, follow me. Follow me, Skinner. Let's go. We're going to go over here. All right. We're going to talk to Jake Finch. Jake Finch down here in the famous number 51, the Phoenix racing car. How is your race car? I feel like it's pretty good. I'm um, excited about it. Um, we'll see what we got. It's a long race. I think if we can uh, be there at the end, I think we'll have a shot. Okay, you're a guy from South Florida, from uh, the panhandle of Florida, so you got that little snowball derby thing going on. What does this race, though, mean to you to come up here and run in this historic race? Yeah, I think it's a huge race, uh, obviously, um, with all the history behind it. Um, I love I love this place. It's a fun track. Um, I kind of wanted to get my my redemption on it from last year, you know, having that misfortunate right front tire going out on us. But um, hopefully we can have a good day. And I think, I don't know my history, I think this is like the only one my dad might not have in short track. I think, maybe. Yeah. So don't take my word for it. So I'm trying to trying to help him out with that. But uh, we'll see. I think we got a good piece for today. When I look at your season, the ARCA East Series, you had some starts there, and you won the race at Dover. I understand. Mile track, half mile track, concrete, asphalt. But are there just similarities with the with, with, with the way cars go around those racetracks? Yeah, I think they're all relatively similar when it comes to like Dover, Bristol, and, and, and here as well. But I think like this place is such a different characteristic. I mean, uh, the line that you run around here, Bristol is pretty heavily on the bottom nowadays. Um, and, and Dover has that specific line as well. I think here uh, it's kind of tricky because you, you can make speed um, around multiple different grooves. And I think that that groove really changes throughout the race. Um, so to be able to keep up with that and learn throughout the race and be able to uh, to make the most of it, I think that's the big thing. But when it comes to the physicality of it, I think it's a, a big deal to be able to have Dover and place like Bristol as well under my belt. So we'll see. How much does this place wear you out physically when you get done here? And I know you ran the race last year. You wore out physically, mentally. How does how does it tax on you as a race car driver? Yeah, I'd like to say that I'm pretty good physically. Sure. Um, you know, I've worked really hard on it with Trenton and my nephew Cole as well. So we've been really working really hard on the physicality aspect of it. So I feel like I'm, I'm excited to be able to show that off a little bit. Uh, but I think the mental aspect is, is quite hard as well. You know, you get those le long green flag runs, and uh, later in the race, when a normal race would be finished, you still got maybe halfway or another 100 to go. So I think you just got to be mentally sharp and mentally tough uh, throughout the whole race. And um, I know a lot of people talk about the, the length of it, but, you know, obviously my goal is to be able to race on Sundays. And so you kind of got to get used to it, right? This is a normal every week deal uh, to be up there. And so excited for it. Hopefully uh, we could get better and learn something today. Well, we wish you the well, and uh, if this is the one that your dad didn't get, maybe we'll get a trophy for him here today. I hope so. I'd like to shoot that gun. There we go. Yes, the Winchester gun, that is for sure. That is Jake Finch ready to roll here today as well. Going to be fun, fun stuff watching him. I just love, I love coming into a racetrack and seeing that Phoenix number 51 car. I just absolutely love that. It means so much in the rich history of racing is the uh, Phoenix Racing, James Finch, his father. It's so much success in NASCAR ranks. I always tie him with Jeff Purvis. He's always the one that I kind of go to when I think about it, and it's just really, really neat to see Jake Finch down here as he is um, going so as Jake Finch down here meeting some fans and having a good time here as we get set to go closer and closer to the start of this afternoon's historic the 52nd running of the Winchester 400 here at this Winchester Speedway drivers are gathering we're getting ready to do driver introductions now Let's see if we can catch up with another driver man it's come close here before as well Jake Garcia down here Jake, what's your thoughts here as you're getting ready to roll off? How's things, uh, how's things looking for you and your team? Uh, I'm really excited for it. We've been pretty close the last couple of years and just uh, need a little bit more luck, probably a little bit more skill as well. So um, hopefully we can get it done this year. Uh, I'm excited for it. It's a long race. And I uh, just want to thank Ricky Turner and all my guys, as well as uh, Freight Auctions, RaceChoice.com, Willwood Disc Brakes, and Quanta Services. Yeah, no doubt it is. It's really, really cool. What um, you, you talk about, are there lessons you've learned over the last couple of years with your new mi near misses that you hope can, can can pull off and put you in the winner's circle here today? Well, not running into the wall would be a, a good <laughs> lesson to learn. Um, but, yeah, there's some things to be learned from the past couple of races, and hopefully we can apply those here today. But just the biggest things, it's really long race and just about surviving to, to about lap 350. 
you run the NASCAR Cra Craftsman Truck Series as well. You talk about surviving the lap 350. Do you sense, Do you? How, how do you feel this race? 400 laps are on this racetrack. Do you do you, do you get midway through and say, man, this is, uh, this, this, this is a keeper, this is a long one? Yeah, it's... Uh... It's pretty surprising when you're at lap 250 and you look around and you've got 150 more. So, uh, but yeah, it's long, certainly a lot longer than uh, what I'm used to in the truck series. But um, I really enjoy these long super late model races and uh, hopefully we can uh, have some success today. Well, we wish you well, that's for sure. Thank you very much. Man, I'll tell you what, this is one of the young drivers that I've got my eye on, Jake Garcia here, and he would like to add the Winchester 400 Freight Auctions, of course, a big partner in the motorsports world, and he would like to add Freight Auctions into Victory Lane here, the Winchester 400. Jake Garcia, one of the top drivers here as well. So we're just having a good time, I think. This is called, this is in the business, is what they call tap dancing and filling, because I think we're running a little bit behind the plan here was going to be this, folks. I'm just going to be honest with you. The plan was going to be all the drivers were going to be corralled behind the stage, and I was going to be able to spin around and grab another one and another one. They're not all gathered behind the stage. We're running up and down pit road here and having a good time, but uh, I think they're getting ready to do driver introductions, and this is just really, really fun. Part of the atmosphere, part of the, uh, part of the excitement of this Winchester 400 here. A funny story, okay? I'm going to tell you this while I'm looking around out of the corner of my eye to see if I can find another victim, okay? Uh, the uh, funny story, in the driver's meeting, in the driver's meeting, the question was asked, what do we do on the parade laps with the leaves on the grill? And I thought, what in the wide world of sports are they talking about? Beautiful, beautiful area here. And the fall colors are spectacular, okay? In years past, the grills of these race cars would get caught up with leaves on the parade lap, on the parade laps, leaves would come into here and they actually contemplated going caution or before we go green, allowing the drivers to come in. Now, we've had a lot of racing here this morning. So the track is clear and actually the track has dispatched a bunch of leaf blowers over to the back stretch to make sure that there's no leaves on the grill. So really, really neat stuff. All part of the lure, all part of the fun here of racing in Winchester, Indiana in the fall is leaves on the grill. I've heard of hot dog wrappers, but I've never heard of leaves on the grill. All right, we gotta find someone else to talk to here as uh, we're still just a few moments away from that driver introductions window and be able to get caught up with some of the drivers, some of the stars of the ASA, Stars Tour here at this racetrack. All right, we're going to continue on here. I'm just running out of I'm running out of people in Nomex. I have ran out of people in Nomex, that's for sure. So uh, we're going to see what we have down here as far as drivers go. Stage is being set up, and momentarily we will have drivers. Oh, come on, I got one. We just talked to this. We just talked a lot about this guy. We just talked a lot about this guy. Just had a whole piece about Gio Ruggiero. Let's talk to Gio now, as a matter of fact. Let's catch up with Gio. Gio, we did a whole, we did a whole big thing on our pre-race show about you and your success, and we talked about it, and we talked to you before this. Been here practicing yesterday. How is the car? How are you? How are you feeling about things as you get ready to climb aboard? Yeah, we didn't get a ton of practice, um, but I think the car's really good. Um, qualifying, unfortunately, got rained out. Uh, we're going to be starting on the front row, you know, that's always good. Uh, got my, my teammate Cole Butcher on the inside of me and, and Williams starting third. So I think it's gonna be a great race. Uh, we just need to, you know, survive and be there at the end, a long 400 laps for sure. What are some of the keys that you tell yourself over the first 100 laps, the first 200 laps of this race, knowing that you can't win it then, but you can certainly lose that race. What are type of things that you do as you, uh, as you program yourself basically to go here today? Yeah, you just need to, you know, be patient. Um, Race everybody, you know, clean and respectful. Uh, take care of the tires, take care of the car, and, uh, you know, keep it in one piece. You know, last 100 laps or so is when you're going to, you know, start to care about track position and, you know, make your moves. Well, been a great season for you as well. Got one championship locked up. Take the green flag, get the other championship. What does it mean to you as a guy that's kind of climbed the ladder to, to, to be seeing success that every young racer hopes to have? Yeah, I think it's awesome. Um, all the Donnie Wilson guys, you know, they work so hard all year. Um, I think it's, you know, a great accomplishment to win both championships and uh, kind of, you know, helps uh, kind of pay off for all the hard work. Well, it is going to be interesting to see. It really, truly is. Gio Ruggiero, 
has already won the Southern Super Series championship. Oh, yeah, man, they're cheering for him down here. And we're going to see what happens here today as he goes for the CRA championship. Going to lock that up by starting this race and then uh, see if he can win a Winchester 400. That would put the exclamation point on it all if Gio was to take that Winchester rifle and all the accolades on the way out the door. So I do actually see stages being set up. I do actually see banners being set up. And I think we're getting closer and closer to start time here on this thing. So maybe we'll actually be able to round up a few more drivers here along the way and get situated. So driver introductions coming up here in just a little bit here at the Winchester Speedway. I'm going to tell you another problem we have, okay? This is announcer problems, okay? It's 52 degrees. Drivers in fire suits are all wearing coats. So I don't know which is drivers, which are drivers, which are crew members. They're all bundled up in coats, as we can see. Everyone kind of bundled up and, uh, yeah, just kind of doing their thing here on a chilly, chilly day here at the Winchester Speedway and just kind of uh, rolling with it here and just making sure that we are set to go here for the Winchester 400, this great, great classic race, this incredible race that we have here this afternoon as we continue on working here to get situated and set to go. So a uh, few more moments here. We will continue on with this race as we're going to make our way over here, catch up with another one of our drivers. Andrik Dima, uh, Dima Yuga. Yeah. You, how do you say that? Andrik Dima Yuga. That's exactly. How about that? I got it right. I nailed it. All right. How about that? I handled it. All right. Uh, driving for Richie Waters, number five A car here. Um, Winchester. You're a racer out of Mexico. You were telling me earlier there's a couple ovals there, but there's nothing in the world down there like this. What's this like? Yeah, well, in Mexico, we have this kind of banking. Uh, that's a, a pretty rude, uh, this is a pretty rude racetrack, and you need, you need to be quick and safe with the car. Well, how is the car? How did your practice go? How did everything go for you yesterday? Well, the car is it's pretty good. It's very, very, how, how can I say it? It's very good to ride. I, I, I have fun in the car and well, we need to, to keep digging all the race and keep pushing to be on the last lap. Yeah, that's for sure. You work with a, uh, a team owner named Richie Waters. Richie has been around this thing. He's won the Snowball Derby as a crew chief. What does it mean to you to have and, and to work with a guy that has so much super late model experience and success? Well, it's very good for me. Uh, he teach me a lot. Actually, he's a very nice guy. He he explains to you, and he wants to help you. So it's a pretty nice guy, and I'm so so thankful to, to be racing here in the Winchester 400 with Richie Warriors. We wish you the best, Andrew. We'll see what happens, right? Thanks. Hope, hopefully, I see you in the victory lane. There we go. We got a plan. We're going to victory lane. Andrew and I going to victory lane, and I may attempt his last name then again. Not before then, because I'll mess it up, that's for sure. Speaking of victory lane here at this racetrack, a man who has done it twice before, Stephen Nassi down here. How do you feel? How's your, uh, how's your car? How are things looking for you here to try to go for number three? I feel good. You know, I'm a little bit cold. It's not, not pretty cool out today, but, um, you know, once you get in that car, we'll warm right up. But, uh, you know, I think the car is pretty good. We kind of struggled in practice yesterday, but, um, you know, today we were really fast in the warm-up laps, so uh, hopefully... Hopefully the car kind of can do that all race, and you know we'll find ourselves in contention. You just got to, uh, you know, make it for uh, for 350, 360 laps, and then be there for the last 30, 40, 50. You are tied with Gary Sedamont. Mark Martin and Mike Eddy as a two-time winner of that race. I know race car drivers. You live in the here and now, but what does that mean? to say you're tied with those and there's a couple guys with three wins that you would add your name to that list. What does that mean to you to be in category of, of legends like that? Well, you know, it'd be really big. There's uh, there's one that I'm trying to chase, you know, Mike Cope. And, uh, you know, I'm good friends with him and his son, Travis, and uh, Jimmy, his brother. Um, you know, so I know he's got, I thought he had three in a row maybe, but, uh, you know, he, he was a good wheel man, you know, but uh, I'm coming for his record and definitely going to try to try to get, get, I think he got four maybe, so I'm going for five. I got plenty of time and, uh, you know, we should have a good shot. As this race unfolds, what types of things do you tell yourself, what types of things do you do to manage it to be there at the end of this race? Ah, uh, well, I mean, where I'm starting at 17th, you know, it's kind of, it's tough. I'm kind of at the mercy of the guys in front of me. You know, the track could easily get blocked up or something, and, uh, you know, I might not be able to make it through. The biggest thing is being able to keep the fenders on it, you know, and, um, 
you have plenty of tires. So if you kind of play the tire strategy, you can, um, you know, have plenty of rubber for the end of the race. So, uh, you know, you just got to stay out of trouble and watch the big wrecks because, you know, everything happens so fast and you really can get caught up in something nasty quick. So uh, just try to avoid all that and be up front in the end. And, you know, usually if you're it, at the end of the race, you know, there's only, you know, five, six, seven cars on the lead lap. So if you can be there at the end, you have a good shot of, of racing for a win. We certainly wish you the best. It's going to be fun to watch. All right. Thank you. There we go. Stephen Nasty, one of the best in this business. Nasty Nasty is where he is goes by. And so Stephen Nasty, ready to go here in this race and uh, set to go here along the way as we continue on getting closer and closer. Let's catch up with the Cole Butcher is down here, another one of the drivers for Donnie Wilson Racing. My man, how are you? How's things? How's the race car? Oh, it's really good. How are you? I'm fantastic other than this weather. I mean, who brought this weather along with us? A little chilly, but I bet you it'll be all right and warm and nice and balmy in that race car. Yeah, I can't wait to get in the car. It's a little bit chilly right now, but, uh, you know, up home in Canada, it's probably about the same, so uh, maybe I have the upper hand. Well, there you go about it. Uh, this race, um, what do you need to do in the early stages? How do you balance? How do you manage this race to make sure you have a shot at the end of the day? Just save tires. You know, we have this new tire on the right side that nobody really knows what's going to happen, so just save tires. Be there at the end pretty well is all you can do. Keep the fence on it so you had a limited practice yesterday what did you learn about that right side tire it, it doesn't really wear out as fast as you would think we had 30 laps on our tire that we were still running pretty good time so we did a lot of mock runs yesterday thinking we could qualifying it but it, it, it seems to have some some longevity in it so uh, i guess we'll see Stay tuned, that's for sure. We wish you the well. Thank you very much. There we go, Cole Butcher, one of the drivers ready to go here today. Cole Butcher going to roll off on the pole position. They do this on the basis of the draw, top eight in practice speeds. Cole Butcher going to be one of the drivers to watch. He will be the driver that leads us to green here this afternoon at the Winchester Speedway. So there he is. Oh, yeah, they're, they're having a good time down here. Everyone kind of yucking it up and uh, really, really having a good time. Going to catch up with a driver from down in Florida. Michael Hindi down here. You're not Michael Hindi. I got the wrong guy. You look like him from the back. See that? This is what happens. There he is. I saw him earlier. Here he is. Here's Michael. I'm busy grabbing other drivers over here, giving the wrong guy. I'm looking around the corner. Michael Hindi from down in Florida. Michael, how are things looking for your Winchester 400 effort? Um, I'm hoping they look pretty good. We were having a good run last year and just didn't didn't finish the race. Didn't get a whole lot of practice yesterday. Fought some uh, mechanical failures, but uh, hoping for a good, good, clean race today. Well, I hope so as well, Michael. I was talking to Freddie Query. I did a lot of stuff at Concord. Freddie's the competition director here for ASA, and he said that Michael Hind is a heck of a racer, a really good racer. Um, how do you feel about it? You've had some success down in Florida. What would it mean to you to add a Winchester 400 to that resume and, and really establish yourself as one of these guys we need to keep an eye on all the time? I really appreciate him saying that. Uh, been been really fast here every time we came here. Just luck hasn't been our way. Have some good luck in Florida. Just had a lot of speed here. Just really hoping to finish it off and get us a 400. Do you believe this announcer just called you Hindi? It's Hind, right? It's Hind. Yes, sir. I just let it slide. Yeah, my producer didn't let it slide. He's correcting me because, well, I can be in it. We wish you the best. We wish you well here today. Thank you very much. There we go. He is one to watch. That's for sure. Michael Hind out here going to be rolling off this afternoon. He starts in the 12th starting spot here this afternoon. Let's catch up with another racer down here. Ty Majeski, a the current point leader with the ASA Stars Tour. Ty... You and I talked to Talladega a couple weeks ago. You'd never seen Winchester. You roll in here yesterday. What did you see? What did you learn? What did you feel with this historic racetrack? Oh, place is incredible. Um, it's everything that everyone uh, cracks it up to be. Just a really cool racetrack, cool venue. Uh, happy to have the opportunity to come here. I can't thank uh, Mike Hine and Michael Hine Racing, all their guys enough. Chris Cater uh, prepared a really good race car for us to, to come here and compete. So, um, yeah, didn't really ever think I would end up here at Winchester, but... Uh, here we, all, here we are chasing the ASA Stars Tour points and uh, excited to get it going today. You mentioned Michael Hind and that race team. What does it take to field a car here at this racetrack? What are some of the special characteristics of this racetrack where you felt you needed to bring some other folks in? You got a great operation with your team, but what did it feel like you need to add to it to bring in some other people to build a car for this racetrack? Yeah, this racetrack is just such an anomaly. And um, with my with my schedule, we just weren't able to come here and test. And with the limited amount of practice that the Stars Tour gives you, we just... Um, you know, felt like this is our best chance to come here and hit the ground running and, and be competitive. So uh, that's what we decided to do. And um, like I said, uh, they gave us a great opportunity to come here and, and use their car. And um, hopefully we can put in victory lane today. I think we'll have a good shot at it. 
Fastest in the practice. You drew a seven. Is there uh, the, the early laps of this thing? How do you manage the early laps? Starting seventh with some cars in front of you. Are you in a hurry to get to the front, or how do you manage the early laps here? Yeah, you know, just gonna kind of see how it goes. I've I've never raced here before, so really never been in traffic. So just um, obviously gonna take it easy in the beginning and and try and you know feel out the race and the pace and uh, go from there. Well, there you have it. That is Ty Majeski down here as opening ceremonies have began here at the Speedway, and we are doing all of the formalities here of opening ceremonies. So opening ceremonies continuing on here, so stay with us. We'll be back. The Winchester 400 is coming up soon. Hey, I, I don't to tell you. Can you please just stall them or something? Tell a joke. I'll be there soon. Yeah. Time out for Sunoco Go Rewards? Sir, I need one hand on the roof, one hand on the pump. With new Sunoco Go Rewards, when you fuel, you save. Ma'am, that's a beautiful dress. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So pretty. <laughs> Thank you. Nice lace there, too. So Thank you. What is that? Ladies' undergarments? Yeah. So drop what you're doing, because rewards come first. The Speed Sport Insider is your insider hot pass to exclusive motorsports coverage that you won't find anywhere else. Each week, you'll have insider access to features, columns, and photographs from award-winning professionals covering NASCAR, IndyCar, dirt track racing, off-road, and more. It's your insider ticket to behind-the-scenes coverage, insight, and analysis. Become an insider for $5 a month or get a free trial and cancel at any time. Go to SpeedSport.com to become a Speed Sport Insider today. Patient stable. Oh, Sunoco Go Rewards. His vitals look good. Let's stop real quick. You cool with that? Yeah, get those savings. You're a trooper. Could I get a hot dog? We'll get you a hot dog. And a slushie? And a slushie. With new Sunoco Go Rewards, when you fuel, you save. I'll take these savings. Thank you so much. So drop what you're doing, because rewards come first. <laughs> Speedsport has been America's motorsports authority since 1934. Get news, results, and commentary from the most connected experts in the business. Covering all forms of motorsports from flat track to NASCAR and everything in between. Bookmark Speedsport.com on your mobile device now. Or follow Speedsport on social. And be sure to subscribe to the Speedsport Daily. Speedsport is your one-stop shop for all things racing on two wheels and four. Welcome back to Winchester Speedway, where we are approaching start time. It's going to be a little after 2 o'clock with four other features already have been on track. You see the folks filing into the grandstands. Drivers' anticipation of going green on 400 laps of racing today. For the first time, Ty Majeski making a start at Winchester Speedway. He's got a fast race car, was quickest in final practice yesterday. We had a chance to talk earlier this week to Ty about Winchester. Well, I think I think Winchester is a badass racetrack, right? I mean, it's um, like Bristol, but um, obviously you work the top, super rough. I'm Ty Majeski, driver of the 91 uh, Ford Fusion. 
competing in the ASA National Tour for uh, for the championship. Um, how I got into racing was uh, my family was always race fans growing up, um, and I was about nine years old, and um, all my buddies were wanting to play tackle football at the time, and I'm about 5'4", 140 pounds now, so, um, you know, I'm not the biggest guy, so my parents didn't want me going out and getting hurt, my dad's like, hey, how about if I uh, go out and buy a go-kart instead, we can start racing, and uh Said, yeah, sure, that sounds pretty cool. And uh, the rest is history. Started racing local level, had some success. Um, started racing national go karts, and eventually moved into into late models. Ty Majeski, your winner of the Jim Sutter Classic at Dells Raceway Park tonight. Yeah, so I graduated high school in '13. Uh, went to go be a mechanical engineer at UW Madison um, for, for about two and a half years, and that's when I got my opportunity to go and uh, and drive for Roush. And that was a hard decision, right? It was life changing, right? To drop out of college and and pursue your racing career. But um, you know, I looked at it as you know, okay, ten years from now, would I regret not dropping out of school and and at least giving it a try. And I, I thought I would. I'm like, man, this is what I've always wanted to do. And um, not many people get that kind of opportunity to, you know, have an offer to go and race a NASCAR and at least for the time being, making a living doing what you love to do. So I'm like, yeah, I got to do it. So I uh, dropped out of school and uh, I went to pursue my dream. And uh, thankfully I did. Well, they say stars too, or I, I think, you know, I think what Bob and you know Bob Sargent, everybody's done on his staff to try and create a super late model national series is special, right? Bringing back ASA um, and, and trying to help ask not not just super late model racing, but pavement racing in general. I feel like there was a um, sort of a need for something like this in, in the in the in the in the country, and um, just to be a part of it. And obviously, it worked well with my schedule, so that's why I'm able to race it. Uh, but it was a lot, right? There was, um, you know, the North Carolina swing was hard on our teams, and uh, it, there was a lot that went into, you know, making all these races. But um, I'm glad we've done it. We're in a, a good position from a point standpoint. I feel like we've had a, a really good season and went to a lot of new racetracks that we had never been to and, and performed pretty well at, which is uh, not easy to do with the limited amount of practice that they've given us. It goes the ASA Stars National Tour at Wisconsin International Raceway to Ty Majeski. Well, I think I think Winchester is a badass racetrack, right? I mean, it's um, like Bristol, but um, obviously you work the top, super rough, a lot of... Uh, a lot of character to the racetrack. I've watched plenty of races there, right? I, I've watched the Winchester 400, uh, the live stream for the last, you know, X amount of years. Um, so obviously a lot goes into it, a lot of load on the race cars. Uh, I'm gonna take a, a whole different package, different setup than we're accustomed to. And, um, you know, hopefully we can, you know, come up with a decent package and, and unload close there. Uh, it's not gonna be easy, definitely um, probably the hardest you know, the, the most difficult challenge for us uh, on the schedule, and it's going to be an obstacle we're going to have to overcome if, uh, if we're going to be champion at the end of the year. Fans still filing into the grandstands. You see they are all bundled up on this cool Sunday afternoon, but fortunately, looks like we're going to be able to get all of our racing action completed for the 52nd running of the Winchester 400 weekend. Four features already in the books today. A number of features held on Friday night as well. There's the starting field. Ty Majeski, a part of that starting field. The Go Fast Pole Award winner coming from final practice yesterday afternoon. There's a look at the racetrack. We talked a lot about strategy earlier. We talked a lot about tires. We talked a lot about when to make the pit stops when they should make that final stop, take those final tires. So much involved into getting to the end of this Winchester 400 and being out front at the right time. And one of the best over the years and making those calls and making that strategy is one of the team leaders there at Donnie Wilson Racing and Bon Suss. And Bon Suss is one of those guys that you got to pick his brain. And we picked his brain. We had a chance to talk to him about how things are expected to play out. No one really knows, but Bon Suss is maybe a guy that has a little insight and here's Bond with some of those thoughts. Hi, Bond Suss here from Wilson Motorsports, and today we're going to talk about the Winchester 400, a historic, grueling race, 400 laps around the super fast half mile. That's 200 miles of racing that you're going to see here. Uh, compared to Anderson, 400 laps, quarter mile racetrack, 100 miles. Toledo, the last race, 200 laps, 100 miles. Uh, this race is twice as long as anything we've done on the ASA Tour. 
Uh, we're going to talk about car durability, the components that go into the cars to make it last that long. It's a rough racetrack. Uh, you almost have to build a tank to run here. We're going to talk about tire wear, fuel strategy, pit stops. There's a lot that goes into this race, a long grueling race to see if we can win the Winchester 400 this year. Race strategy for the Winchester 400. It's one of the most unique races in short track racing. There's a lot of different ideas that can play out. We're allowed 12 tires for the race, four on the car to start, eight in our pit. The difference is we can only put on two tires per pit stop. So that's gonna require each car to come down four times to utilize their tire allotment. The other thing is fuel strategy. This is a half mile racetrack, 200 miles. As we've seen at Toledo, cars start to run out of fuel around the lap 150 mark. So teams are gonna have to come to pit road at least every 150 laps to put, on, to put in their tires and put in their fuel. So a lot of race strategy here. It's a long gru grueling race. Do cars opt for tires early to be fast and put cars laps down? Do cars try to save tires for the end and risk going a lap down? There's a lot of strategy that plays out here at the Winchester 400. Tire use here at the Winchester 400 is one of the biggest factors of the race. Teams are allowed 12 tires to use and utilize in the race, four on the car and eight in their pit. The F45 compound is what's on the left side. The new ST3 compound is what'll be on the right side, a brand new tire that Hoosier developed just for this year's Winchester 400. With teams pushing the uh, envelope with their setups, springs, shocks, bumps, cambers, all of that goes into the effect of tire wear and how long they can run on their tires. Our team's gonna take an approach of pitting conservatively every 75 laps and taking two tires, or are they gonna to try to stretch their tire wear and get to the end of the race where they have fresh rubber to try to win the Winchester 400? One of the biggest keys of the Winchester 400 is having a car and the components that can make it to the end of the race. So it's encouraged that a lot of teams bring new parts and pieces on their car. Teams will install new A-frames, new lower control arms, new tie rods, new rod ends, new ball joints. Some of them even opt to use steel over aluminum parts because they're stronger. They'll also do the same in the back of the car. Track bars, trailing arms, brackets, all will be beefed up to make the end of the race. Remember, the cars at Winchester see uploads of four Gs. One G is the weight of the car, 2,800 pounds. So the car is gonna see forces of over 11,000 pounds at the Winchester 400, and not having a part failure is one of the biggest keys to having a good day at the Winchester 400. All right, so we showed you a little bit of what goes into trying to win the Winchester 400. The nature of this race, 400 laps, 200 miles, a rough race track, a long, enduring race. The Gs that are on the car, the load that's on the car and the driver, the teams and their strategy, how will they use their tires, when will they pit for fuel, the components that go into the race car being strong enough and durable, who's going to take home that rifle from this year's Winchester 400? Back at Winchester Speedway, the fans at the campground having a fun time tailgating. A lot of extra party time yesterday with the rain falling. It wasn't party time on the racetrack, but in the campground, a different story. Now they recover. And they come in and they watch 400 laps of grueling racing action. The world's fastest half mile Winchester Speedway. I want to welcome those watching on the free preview on social media. Remember, early on in this race, you want to get the pay-per-view whether that be at midwesttour.tv. You can also check out tracktv.com, Racing America, all the different places to catch the coverage of today's full 400 laps of racing action to see who that driver is that had the strategy, had the tires, had the parts, longevity that Bon Suss talked about there moments ago. Who will win today's Winchester 400? The top eight, of course, it wasn't single car qualifying as it typically is because we had to go with the final practice. The final practice set the field. The top eight did the redraw. Cole Butcher won the redraw. The Go Fast Pull Award winner was technically Ty Majeski as he set the fast time. Butcher will start from the pole, finished P9 one year ago today, and that's his red number 28 car starting there at the front of the grid on the front straightaway. Gio Ruggiero, teammate, William Sawalich, another teammate, the Donnie Wilson Motorsports team, getting the luck of the draw on the redraw yesterday. Albert Francis starting in fourth. We talked about he build, building his own engines as a 21-year-old driver from Painesville, Ohio. Jake Garcia. Watch for Jake Garcia today. He's led this race. He's been out front. He's 18 years of age. He's finished second in the Snowball Derby. Today could be a breakthrough for the Winchester 400 for Jake Garcia. Dakota Stroop 
and the 47, 32-year-old driver, a veteran from Owensboro, Kentucky, starting in the sixth position. Then it's Ty Majeski, the ASA Stars National Tour point leader, starting seventh, and Chase Berta starting in the eighth position, winning the JEG CRA All-Stars Tour. Going to come up just short here in this ASA CRA Super Series Championship. But there's the starting grid along the front straightaway as we approach the starting command, the invocation, the national anthem. We're probably about 10 minutes away from this race going green flag in Winchester, Indiana. It's one of the marquee events when it comes to short track racing. And today... Gary St. Amant, the Grand Marshal, a two-time winner of this race, an ASA National Tour champion, driver from the Columbus, Ohio area, is going to join me to call his second Winchester 400. Did so a couple of years ago as well. And Gary's going to be in the booth. He's been able to shake all the driver's hands as they cross the stage. He's going to give the starting command, I believe, in today's race. And then he's going to head to the tower to do the same thing. And, uh, and call the action with me for 400 laps. And he's got a lot of great insight, not only as a driver that's been in victory lane at Winchester, not only as a crew chief that's led his driver to finishes here at Winchester Speedway, but also as a fan. He loves this. He came out, was going to work on a team this weekend. That car wasn't able to make the call, wasn't able to be here this week. So he came out just to be a fan this week. He's the Grand Marshal, was going to sit in the stands today. But we called him into the action. We said, Gary, we want you up in the tower. We want, to, we want your insight for 400 laps of action here at Winchester Speedway. Pre-race continues here on our coverage of this marquee event as we get ready for a Great day of racing action. This is one that you've got to get out to. We know a lot of people are going to be watching from home today in the comfort of their living room, but this is one that you want to get out and see right here at Winchester Speedway as we are moments away from getting things underway. Steve Post is down on pit road all day long from MRN. There's the trophy, the rifle, the trophy w awaits the winner of today's 52nd running of the Winchester 400. That probably taking place in the Victory Lane celebration just a little over two hours from now, probably around 5 o'clock Eastern time. Cole Butcher making his way to the driver's seat to get buckled in. He's going to lead the field to green, and he's been fast here on the high banks. Finished ninth last year. Maybe didn't tell the true story. Faster car than what his finish ended up showing. But he's got the teammates. From Wilson Motorsports in second and third, Gio Ruggiero and William Sawalich as we send it down trackside for today's invocation. Followed by the singing of the national anthem by the Winchester Trio. Let's take the hats off, please. Father God, we thank you that we have this day that we can race, enjoy a sport that we dearly love. I pray for great safety on the track, in the pits, in the stands. Watch over everyone that's involved in this race, photographers, pit crew, the whole, everything involved, God. We just thank you for the way that you, we can enjoy this in safety. Watch over those men and women that are protecting us even right now. Bless each one of them. Bring them home safely. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. 
The anticipation building for the 52nd running of the Winchester 400 here at Winchester Speedway. We're about 10 minutes away from the starting command. Make it just a little less than 10 minutes away as drivers will now get buckled in. You can feel the anticipation just by looking at our shots down on the front straightaway as pre-race has come to a close. And now it's all about racing action. 400 laps. 14 tires, including the four on these race cars, to get started that they scuffed earlier today. Normally would be the qualifying tires, but we didn't have single car qualifying. As we watch the drivers get buckled in, big, big prize amounts on the line today. Record purse, over $100,000 for the starting field in today's Winchester 400. Will it be Cole Butcher? Will it be Ty Majeski, a first-time starter in the Winchester 400? Will it be one of the veterans? Will it be one of the youngsters? As we send it away, we'll be back with the start of the Winchester 400 after this. Speedsport has been America's motorsports authority since 1934. Get news, results, and commentary from the most connected experts in the business. Covering all forms of motorsports from flat track to NASCAR and everything in between. Bookmark Speedsport.com on your mobile device now or follow Speedsport on social. And be sure to subscribe to the Speedsport Daily. Speedsport is your one-stop shop for all things racing on two wheels and four. The Speedsport Insider is your insider hot pass to exclusive motorsports coverage that you won't find anywhere else. Each week, you'll have insider access to features, columns, and photographs from award-winning professionals covering NASCAR, IndyCar, dirt track racing, off-road, and more. It's your insider ticket to behind-the-scenes coverage, insight, and analysis. Become an insider for $5 a month or get a free trial and cancel at any time. Go to Speedsport.com to become a Speedsport Insider today. Hey, I, I don't know what to tell you. Can you please just stall them or something? Tell a joke. I'll be there soon. Yeah. Time out for Sunoco Go Rewards? Sir, I need one hand on the roof, one hand on the pump. With new Sunoco Go Rewards, when you fuel, you save. Ma'am, that's a beautiful dress. Oh, my gosh. So pretty. <laughs> Thank you. Nice lace there, too. So Thank you. What is that? Ladies' undergarments? Yeah. Huh. So drop what you're doing, because rewards come first. <laughs> It's the biggest racing show of the year, Friday through Sunday, November 3rd through 5th at Nashville Fairground Speedway. Six fast-paced divisions of racing on the quarter mile Friday night. Pole qualifying in three big feature events Saturday night. And the Curb Records Big Machine Vodka Spike Coolers Fall American 400 on Sunday afternoon. Racing starts at 6.30 Friday, 5 o'clock Saturday, and 1 o'clock Sunday. Tickets available at NashvilleFairgroundSpeedway.racing or at the gate on race day. It's the 39th All-American 400 weekend, Friday through Sunday, November 3rd through 5th. Get your tickets now. Winchester, the very word commands a racer's attention. Their fears, their desires, their respect. 40 degrees of baking, lightning fast lap times, no margin for error, and danger lurking around every turn. For over a century, this half mile layout has attracted the biggest names in auto racing luring them to showcase their talents on one of the most treacherous tracks around. Indy 500 winners like Johnny Rutherford and Gordon Johncock, NASCAR legends like Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace, Mark Martin, Tony Stewart, and Kyle Busch. Grassroots heroes like Mike Eddy, Bob Seneker, Rich Vogler, Butch Miller, Bob Keselowski, and Frank Kimmel. Even upcoming stars like Ty Gibbs, Sammy Smith, and William Sawalich have tested their mettle here. To put it mildly, through these gates walk the bravest drivers in the world. The Winchester 400 has been the culmination of everything this track represents for well over a half century. Since 1970, when the inaugural Dry Power 400 was won by Dave Sorg with a five lap margin of victory, this race has been circled on every driver's calendar to prove just how good they really are. But this race isn't just about going fast, even if it is the world's fastest half mile. It's about survival. Crashes happen quickly and fiercely. It's about managing your equipment. Tires are limited and parts only have certain threshold before failure. 
and it's about things you cannot control, otherwise known as luck. Sometimes things just need to go your way. If you can muster all of that, well, you just might find yourself in victory lane. Today, an entire field of drivers have placed their bet on whether they'll be the one Lady Luck bestows good fortune upon this afternoon. Ty Majeski lost a third of his point lead at Toledo after an engine failure forced him to retire early. And Cole Butcher, despite some off-track excursions, closed the gap with a runner-up finish. Buckle up, settle in, and let's go racing. It's the penultimate race of the inaugural ASA Stars National Tour, the Winchester 400. Super Late Model Racing's longest marathon starts now. From the high banks of the world's fastest half mile, the ASA Stars National Tour converges with the ASA CRA Super Series for one of short track racing's crown jewels, the 52nd running of the Winchester 400. Along with Steve Post, the postman on pit road today, and Grand Marshal Gary St. Amant joining us in the booth here in moments after he gives that starting command, I'm Adam Mackey bringing you all of today's action from the world's fastest half mile. There's the in-car camera, one of our top competitors starting toward the front of the field from the Wilson Motorsports team. All the winners this season on the ASA Stars National Tour, Casey Roderick, Ty Majeski, Bubba Pollard, Gio Ruggiero. Majeski winning again at the Milwaukee Mile. Butcher winning at Anderson. Then Majeski again at Wisconsin International Raceway. And Jesse Love taking the victory at Toledo. Who wins event number nine of the ASA Stars National Tour? We will find out in 400 laps of racing action. Cole Butcher is going to start from the pole, looking to close that gap in the title chase with Ty Majeski. Gio Ruggiero starts from outside of row number one. William Sawalich, Albert Francis in the second row. You see him right there on the screen. Jake Garcia, Dakota Stroop in row three, and Ty Majeski and Chase Berta in row number four. We are about ready to get these engines fired, and Gary St. Amant is going to be at the duty as we send it trackside. Come on. All right, it's time to bring this field to life, and we'll bring back Gary St. Amant and Don Gregory. Gentlemen, let's do it. Drivers, Drivers start, start your engines! The field of super late models from the ASA Stars National Tour and the ASA CRA Super Series. They have fired Don Gregory, Gary St. Amant, the Grand Marshals for today's event. Firing them up on the front stretch, a beautiful field of super late models. Who will make it to the end? Who will be there on that final restart? Putting themselves in contention to find victory. We've seen drivers, we've seen races in the past. One from competitors that were laps down. Scott Hans was running third. Uh, many years ago, the top two crashed in a long battle. Chris Gabehart was one of those. In a long battle, side-by-side -side action coming out of turn two. When the top two crashed, they were the only two drivers on the lead lap at that point. When the race resumed, Scott Hans was running in third. Took him two or three laps before his number went to the top of the pylon in the infield. Getting himself back on the lead lap, he went on to win that day. He was in contention, stayed out of the wreck in turn two. Turned out to be huge for the veteran and multi-time champion of the ASA CRA Super Series, Scott Hans. The field has rolled off, the stands are filling in, and we're in for a treat today. If you are watching live on our social media, this is your chance to go purchase the pay-per-view. You can do so on MidwestTour.tv, Racing America, and TrackTV.com. Any of those three options are there for you to catch all 400 laps of action. We want to thank you for tuning in to our live free preview. We'll show you the start of this race, but to catch the whole thing, you want to get online and check out the pay-per-view. Log on to TrackTV.com. That's one of the ways you can check it out here today. There's Billy Van Meter in the 23 car. Took him a moment later to get fired up and pull away. He's been one of the regulars, one of the drivers that's made all of the events during the 2023 campaign. Billy Van Meter comes into the event seventh place in this year's standings. Gary St. Amant's made his way back to the tower, but 
I'm going to give him just a moment because I know that walk up the steps. I've done it many times this weekend. I don't want to make it seem like you've been running a marathon or anything, Gary. So we'll give you a second to catch your breath. There you see this place is filling up for a, a weekend that didn't look so good weather-wise. And you see the campground, all of the fun that took place out there over top of turns one and two. This place is a happening place year in and year out when it comes to October, Gary. I'll tell you, I, I, I got to share a little story. You bring up the campground. Don Gregory, I wanted him to be a part of this so bad I couldn't see straight. And one of his things that he had to have, he wanted to stay in a campground all weekend. And it's just because all the years he came here, that's what it was. It was a party and a race. And he wanted to experience both of them, Adam, and I think it's awesome. Yeah. Plenty of time yesterday as there you see the Billy Van Meter car. We mentioned the weather. A little bit cool this week. A big chance of rain all week long. Well, they stuck with it and decided to run this weekend, and it turned out to be a great decision. We're going to get it in. Mostly cloudy conditions today, 55 degrees. Feels pretty warm here in the booth, Gary. Oh, the drivers, the drivers are definitely loving the temperature yeah, right now. They're, absolutely. They're, they're going to love the 400 lapper today. And there's Chief Starter Brian Duncan. Setting the field to the inside to the outside. It's Cole Butcher starting from the pole. Gio Ruggiero, you see the William, uh, the Wilson Motorsports team. First, second, and third in the starting lineup. A lot of youngsters through that. Look at Ty Majeski, his first start in the seventh position. Awesome having Ty here for his first race at Winchester Speedway. There's some first-time starters throughout positions 11 through 20. Just saw Billy Van Meter having his issues coming down pit road, starting in the 11th spot. Austin Nason, some experience here on the high banks, starting from 16th. And the multi-time winner, Stephen Nassi, starting 17th. He'll definitely put on a show today. In the final six starters in today's field, a number of those competing in other races this weekend as well, include Brandon Varney, his brother Evan Varney, J.P. Crabtree starting from the final position. If they were able to get repairs done, mechanical issues, uh, woes this weekend for the driver from Indiana. Some great shots from our crew at Drone Shot, watching the cars come underneath. Here's a look at our race info for today. 400 laps the distance. Stage breaks will come at 150 and 300. It is a 14-tire race. The top eight qualifiers, they redrew for their starting positions. Talk about the stage breaks. That brings in some strategy. When you're going to make your pit stops, are you going to make them in a controlled yellow sometime before that comes around? When are you going to put tires on the race car, and how many do you need left late in the race? A lot of questions to be answered here, Adam. And, you know, like the, the new tire, you know, I, I'm going to say that they probably have a bulletproof tire. Um, you know, so they're going to they're gonna have to wait and see what the tire wear is, you know, before they decide their strategy. Track opened in 1916 as a dirt track was paved in 1952. It is a half mile. It is fast, and the turn's banked at 37 degrees. And you really don't notice the banking quite as much. You do from the stands, but when you walk down on the pit road and you see the car scoot through turns one and two and you're down there on pit road, it's pretty crazy. Oh, and in the driver's seat, it definitely it sits you down in the seat to where... It actually feels like your butt is right on the racetrack. and uh, It's an awesome feeling getting around this racetrack. Talk about G-forces at a place like this when you're in the seat of a race car. And the seats are a lot better now than they were back when you were racing the ASA National Tour. You know, the, the, the actual G-forces as far as side to side, you, you get a lot of that here. But more than anything, you just, you just feel the down. It just wants to drive you into the bottom of the seat. And, uh, you know, it's definitely a, a growing 400 lapper that, that we're going to watch today. Steven Nassi, look from the in car of Steven Nassi's Mitch Smith Auto, number 51, 28 year old driver, and he's turned out to be one of the best when it comes to Winchester. He loves this place, and he, he has a lot of fans here. Uh, probably one of the most popular drivers at Winchester Speedway. He's won some big races. Yet to win the Snowball Derby, but the All-American 400, the Winchester 400, the Red Bud, Stephen Nassie putting himself in contention as getting ready to line the field up in four wide formation awesome. as the fans will salute them coming down the front stretch. What a field of cars and stars of the ASA Stars National Tour. Gary St. Amant and Adam Mackey from the booth. Postman Steve Post on pit road today did a great job in pre-race talking to a lot of drivers. And look at that shot. I don't know that I've ever seen four wide at Winchester Speedway for the 400. And what an what a awesome sight that is, Adam. Pretty cool shot for the 
starting field. The fans are ready to go. This will heat them up. <laughs> yes, it will. The wind today makes it feel a little chillier than it uh, than it has. And speaking of wind, a guy that's going to be out in it all day, but he won't even feel it. It's the postman, Steve Post. Steve? Absolutely. It's windy, but it's beautiful. And pit strategy is going to be fascinating to watch here, Adam and Gary, as we play through this one. Traditionally, they've had 12 tires. An additional two tires has been added. So 14 tires. The controlled cautions, you can only change right sides or left sides. You can only move two at a time. So change and moving tires. Who does it when? Who does it where? That's going to be the key to make sure you have the best tires at the end of this race. It's going to be awesome to see who does the right strategy and gets it to the front of the field by the end of 400 laps here at Winchester. Poor Steve. We need to send him his brush, his hairbrush. Get that hair back in shape down. It's windy on pit road. <laughs> or maybe a hat. <laughs> the field has taken formation two by two. Down the back stretch. Gary St. Amant, we're about to bring the field to green. 400 laps of action. The 52nd running of the Winchester 400 for the ASA Stars National Tour. Brian Duncan looks them over. We're underway in Winchester, Indiana. Clean through turns one and two and out front. The 22 of Gio Ruggiero using that outside front row starting spot. Cole Butcher, one of his questions was, do I get a chance to choose inside or outside? You want to be on the outside of the front row for restarts and starts, but since it was a redraw, he wasn't able to. Yeah, and you know, it's 400 laps. I'm sure he would have felt a little more comfortable maybe getting out in that lead, but uh, a lot of race here for uh, to, to get out and, and get that lead. Looking a little further back in the field, the two of Samwalich. What a young driver that has had an outstanding season. We're watching him at Arca, starting to move into the truck series. Super late model action. William Samwalich currently running in fourth. I think he could be a young driver that'll be there at the end of the day. Definitely, uh, he, he's definitely going to be a top contender. And then also right behind him, that Jake Garcia. You know, he. I, I told him in driver introductions. You know, this place owes him one, and. Uh, He'll be in the hunt for today for the 400. Jake Garcia seems like a veteran at this point. It was a handful of years ago. He finished second in the Snowball Derby as we look back up front again. And how about Albert Francis, the 33, running in third? And he's setting his sights on the top, too. Yeah, I saw Albert in the scuff session, and uh, his car looked rock solid. That's Francis taking a look to the inside of Cole Butcher, point runner up in the ASA Stars National Tour as Butcher. Both of these drivers have competed on a regular basis with the series this year. And Francis really working the wheel. You can see those white gloves working the steering down in four. And yes, he is. Top three and a breakaway over fourth and fifth where Sawalich and Garcia settle in. And you don't want to go real hard this early in the race, do you, Gary? No, you don't. You know, especially without the air pressures being up. I'm, I'm going to say now the air pressures probably are up. But, uh, you know, you go too hard on a lower air pressure tire, and it's going to hurt it. Lead change coming with seven laps in the books. It's the 28 of Butcher using the outside lane, and you know, the 22 of Ruggiero kind of came up the banking off of four, maybe a little contact. Yeah, I, I, I actually missed that, Adam. I didn't see that. Albert Francis taking a peek to the inside as now they pounce on the one-time race leader, the 22 of Gio Ruggiero. He's back into the third position, so now... It is Butcher up front, Francis in second, Ruggiero third, so Wallach and Garcia completing the top five, and the top three going pretty hard at it over the first ten laps. Yes, they are, and, uh, you know, they'd be in a 400-lapper. You know, you, you, you would think that they're going to settle in and, and do a lot of riding, but I can tell you this, Albert Francis, uh, he's a focused a race car driver, and he loves this racetrack, and I'm sure that he wants that lead. He wants to lead the Winchester 400 as soon as possible. Francis has three finishes in the 400, a finish of 20th, a 7th, and a 22nd. He finished 5th on Labor Day weekend here. And right now, Francis goes for the lead, and he takes it away with a power move out of turn two. Yeah, like I said, that, that car looked rock solid in the scuff session, and uh, I think he was second overall and uh, behind Stephen Nassi. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say him and Nassi, they have two of the better cars today. So Francis out front. We'll see how this plays out. Once we get 75 to 100 laps in, will the 33 be as good then? Will the 28 be as good? Or will someone like Jake Garcia maybe riding there in the 35 car, settling in, not overusing his equipment, be a little better at that stage of the race? And that, that very well could be the point. 
you know, uh, I think all the Donnie Wilson drivers, you know, I'm sure Donnie got a hold of them and said, hey, you guys, uh, let's be there at the end and let's let's take it easy here, you know, let this race kind of kind of settle in. There's the time of Jeske 91. He has not made a start in the Winchester 400 until today. And he's had a good weekend so far. He's driving for the Michael Hine racing team. He's got a fast race car was the go fast pull award winner by way of that practice result since they didn't get to do single car qualifying and Majeski looks like he has a good race car today too. Ty's been very impressive all weekend. You know I know that uh, you know going down south and doing the truck racing that he's done has helped you know coming to a place like this and and to me he's done an awesome job. I want to thank those watching on our social media channels. Remember you can get the pay per view to watch the full race today track TV .com, racing America. Midwest Tour TV and there's Majeski making his move to the inside of Jake Garcia Garcia currently running in the fifth position top five up for grabs. You know, not, not being here Adam you know like Ty he's kind of learning things for the first time you know actually making passes here you know he's never done it it's it's definitely a different animal of a racetrack probably than he's ever run and uh, he's going to do a lot of learning today. I feel like Ty Majeski maybe had the preconceived notion from hearing from other drivers that I really don't want to race Winchester, maybe because it's a little rough, maybe because you can tear up your equipment. He might have a different feeling after this weekend. Let's be honest. He, he might think Winchester's a pretty cool place. I, I really think that probably a lot of a lot of guys told him how treacherous it was and he thought, you know what, I'm going to show you guys uh, I can come here and, and, and get the job done. And it's rare that you don't see him in a Toby car in the, in the noodle ma machine, but he drives a Michael Hine car and it didn't take him long to get acclimated behind the wheel of that car. Yes. And, uh, you know, any place Ty goes, he's in a threat, uh, the threat to win the race. And uh, obviously today here, I'm sure he's going to be he's going to be right there. And all of a sudden driver who uh, was really on the go pedal early and hard was Painesville driver Albert Francis. And now he's being challenged in some contact at the front of the field. Cole Butcher. Gets to the inside of Francis going to try to attempt the race lead coming off of turn four. Francis hangs on to it, but maybe Francis handle going away this early, perhaps. You know, to me, it very well could have been an air pressure deal. You know, uh, maybe Albert started up a little higher than the Donnie Wilson cars, but uh, it definitely looks like Albert is uh, going backwards a little bit. Now it's Ruggiero to the inside. Ruggiero makes the move, takes second away from Francis, and they're starting to line up right behind him. There's the two of William Sawalich. Could be first, second, and third. Wilson cars here in a moment. And Ty Majeski from the seventh starting position. He's in the top five, and he's closing on the leaders. You know, all the long distance races he's been doing, uh, you know, I can't help but think that he's probably just settled in there. Oh, look out. Majeski off the pace. Problems for the 91 car. Loses some ground down in turn three as he drops to the bottom of the racetrack. He has issues. Ty Majeski, point leader for the ASA Stars National Tour. Just as we talked about him closing on the leaders, he had moved into the top five. Maybe the fastest car on the racetrack, and it's going to come to a stop up in turns one and two. Ty Majeski with big issues. What a shame. What a shame. Looks like all of the tires are up, so maybe some electrical, mechanical problems, drivetrain. I'm going to say it probably went dead in the water, and, uh, you know, like him stopping on the racetrack, he still thinks that he has a shot. It's this early in the race. If anything bad is going to happen to a driver, this early in the race is not a bad place for it to happen. Our first yellow comes out, 374 laps to go, 26 down, and it's for point leader Ty Majeski. Cole Butcher, his closest challenger in the standing, second in points, is leading the race. Big wow. chance for Butcher to try to close that gap. It looks like the car is refired. We saw some smoke come out of the exhaust. We'll see if Majeski is able to pull away. Even if he loses a lap or two here with the free passes, with this race being so early in the event, he can make up those laps. Definitely make up the laps. It will be a quickie yellow will not be a controlled caution this early in the race with just 27 laps in. How about the first 25 laps, Adam? I mean, a lot of excitement already for 25 laps into a 400 lap race. Yeah, that top five battle. <laughs> and we saw Majeski himself moving up from seventh. He was ready to challenge up there for a podium position this early. Doesn't seem like they're being that patient here early on. No, it doesn't. And uh, I don't know what the pace is. But uh, when they when they get lined up like that, racing side by side, bumper to bumper, it it really don't matter how fast they're going. It's uh, it's treacherous. It's hard on the nerves, and uh, you kind of want to just say, "Hey guys, let's just ride." 
So getting some assistance from the track crew is Ty Majeski. Will come to the pits. He's definitely going to lose a few laps under this yellow. Unfortunate break for Majeski, but again, there'll be some controlled yellows, some competition cautions. This race cannot go more than 75 laps in a row without a yellow flag. So if it goes 75 laps of green, they'll get a competition yellow. Not necessarily will that have to happen. And of course, we have our stage breaks at lap 150 and lap 300. ASA Stars National Tour gives away stage points as well, so you want to be up in the top 10 for those. As here comes Majeski down pit road. I do see a little bit of leaves on, a, on the grill. He looked like he's taped up quite a bit. I don't think it's a temperature problem, but uh, she's definitely dead in the water. Also saw for a moment Andrik Dimayuga from Mexico City, Mexico, one of the Richie Waters cars. The number five was stopped on the racetrack, so he fell down our scoring pylon, and the crew does go to work right underneath the hood. Let's see what they're trying to diagnose right there. Second person from the left is Toby Noodleman, crew chief for a long time for Ty Majeski. They don't seem to be too frantically looking for what the problem is. Not a good sign. The, the look on Chris's face, there's... Something serious. So Ty Majeski, one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. And there's the Dima Yuga number five. So issues under yellow for the five car. 30 laps in the books. Again, if you're watching on our social media channels, now's the time to go log on to tracktv.com, Racing America, or MidwestTour.tv, and catch the live coverage of today's Winchester 400 via the pay-per-view. More pit stops taking place. Logan Bearden, 27-year-old driver from Texas, and his pit stall looks like just maybe a handling adjustment. Yep, little air yep, pressure. Air pressure, yeah. Yeah, looked like a lot of the Platinum guys uh, used to work with in Dayton, Ohio, with the Burbas, uh, helping on the 66. So you were scheduled to be part of the, uh, the pit crews this weekend as a crew chief down there, and that all didn't pan out. Your driver was a little under the weather. Yes, he was. Uh, Jordan Riddick, we were we were here Labor Day. We worked together for the first time and had a fourth place finish here then and uh, knew we had some issues with the car. We got the car fixed, went to Pensacola, had a good car down there, was really looking forward to coming here and running 400. Uh, Jordan really thought that we had a shot at winning the race, and uh, they let me know he had bronchitis uh, a couple days ago. There's the Austin Nason number 14. In the pits, Austin Nason, one of the favorites in today's event, fifth place in the ASA Stars National Tour standings. Driver from Roscoe, Illinois, and one of the best in the ASA Midwest Tour over the last few years. We'll head back to the track. There's the Dima Yuga number five. As they try to diagnose that problem that took place after we went yellow. The field is doubled up. Race leader Cole Butcher has chosen the outside lane. This time he does get to choose inside or outside. The cone just passed the finish line on the front straightaway. And Butcher chooses the outside of row number one. Puts second place competitor Gio Ruggiero inside. So Wallach inside of row two. Francis outside of row number two. And for Francis with the car handle going, kind of going away there after he led for a while. Might be hanging on till at least lap 75 to 100 before you really want to make a pit stop. Yeah, you know, Albert has experience here in the 400, and, uh, you know, I'm sure that's probably what, uh, what he's thinking. There's the field. How about On. Steven Nassi from 17th to 8th? Yeah, didn't take him long. He's no, a better racer than he is a qualifier, and even though it wasn't typical qualifying, He's used to starting at the back of fields, whether it's the Snowball Derby, Winchester, Anderson, doesn't matter. He's probably going to start toward the back. Yes, he is. Coming to the green. Ready for the restart. First yellow taking place for Ty Majeski, whose day looks to be over. Green flag is back out. 50-second running of the Winchester 400. Boy, Ruggiero got a nice start, but Butcher fought back on the outside lane in turn number two and back out front is point runner-up Cole Butcher from Canada. Ruggiero drops in line in second. So Wallach third. Albert Francis. The yellow might have helped him a little bit tire-wise. Yes, if his air pressures were up, you know, a little bit to start the race, uh, it definitely helped him out here. We might see him uh, pick up some speed. And there's a side-by-side -side battle. Steven Nassi continues his move forward, racing on the inside of Jake Garcia. 
Garcia had six. Nassi takes it away. And that new matchup with that team, with Campy Racing and Nassi coming together, could be pretty tough. Yes, yes, they are very, they will be tough every place they go. Steve Post standing by with Ty Majeski. A short day for Ty Majeski here under the hood of the race car. And Ty, what puts you out? What happened? Uh, some kind of an engine failure. Must have slowed the valve or something, so bummer. Um, great race car, though. Uh, felt like, you know, I know it was early, but felt like we had at least something that could have competed. So um, that's all you can ask for. Um, just unfortunate. Unfortunate, that's for sure. Ty Majeski, the ASA world leader, out of it here. Engine problems put them behind the wall. Well, depending on how the day goes for Cole Butcher, it could be a real tight point battle going into the All American 400 weekend at Nashville, November 3rd through 5th. The season ender for the ASA Stars National Tour, and I was really hoping that Ty Majeski could continue and go and battle for the uh, the victory today, being his first start. Yep. He's so good at everywhere he goes, and Winchester, just a different type of racetrack. There's Nassie getting challenged back from the 35 of Jake Garcia. So Garcia's not done yet. Yep, looks like they're racing the Dakota Street pretty hard. Dakota up there uh, looks like he has a pretty good race car. Cody Glick down there turning the wrenches on it from, from Hamke and uh, mm. a little bit of loose off of four. Sometimes loose is fast, but I don't know if you want a dirt track here at Winchester through no, corner not, four. Not this early in the race, Adam. You're right. But Dakota Stroop is having a nice run up in the top five. He made the redraw, qualified in the top eight, and he's got a couple of good ones right behind him. Steven Nassie again peeking to the inside as we look back to the front of the field where Cole Butcher leads the way over the 22 of Gio Ruggiero. What a season it's been for Donnie Wilson Motorsports. Always at the front of the field with these young drivers. Cole Butcher, the veteran of those. Butcher, 27 years of age. Ruggiero and Sawalich, each 17 years young. As here comes Nassi again, getting to the inside of Stroop, who's hanging on to it a little bit on the free side. Yes, he is. And I'm sure uh, he, he's probably trying to get to that lap 75 break, the 75 uh, competition caution to get that race car tightened up just a little bit. 45 laps in the books of the 52nd running of the Winchester 400. Cole Butcher leading the way over Ruggiero and Sawalich. There's the top three making their way around the top side of Winchester Speedway, settling in. I don't think they'll be racing each other real hard for at least another couple hundred laps. Yes. Especially being teammates. Nassie continues to try to make the move and that Mitch Smith auto service 51. He's peaked to the inside again of Stroop. Outside lane the place to be and that's kind of always been the case at Winchester, right? Yes, it has. You know, there's been a couple drivers that, that seem to be able to get the job done on the bottom. Travis Braden for one. I remember he could really get around the bottom of this place. But for the most part, you know, you want to be high up on the banking and, uh, you know, that's where the speed's at. That's also where you're going to get the best tire wear up there. And uh, Stephen trying hard to get around Dakota. The place to be is in the outside lane, but the place to be able to pass is the inside lane. So if you can make your car turn on the inside groove and be able to keep as much momentum as possible as we see Nassi do that right now, can he clear him? He does. And Stephen Nassi has picked up position. Moves Stephen Nassi up into the sixth spot as he gets around the 47. Of Dakota Stroop. Nassie actually up into the top five, fifth position as Stroop has dropped to sixth. Here goes the 35 of Jake Garcia. Jake Garcia picking a good time to check up there as we see Stroop kind of changing his lane in turn three a little bit, maybe trying to protect a bit. Yep, yep. And I know Jake, you know, he's got uh, Ricky Turner in his uh, in his pits, and I'm sure Ricky's telling him, hey, you know, you got a long way to go. Uh, you know, pick your right time to get by him or just sit there and ride. Well, we've finished the first one eighth mark of the race over 50 laps in the books and we're watching to see who some of the fast cars are that have moved up through the field. Steven Nassi, one that stands out moving up into fifth. The top four, they've been up in the top four since the start of this race today as Cole Butcher leads the way and it is a four car breakaway over Nassi. But now that he's cleared fifth on back, we'll see if Nassi is able to close the gap and start to challenge the race's fastest cars here early on. See a former winner up there in the top 10 with Noah Grayson up to ninth. 
Yeah, Noah Gregson, former winner of the race, has only started in two of these events. He started this race in 10th, so it's kind of just settling in there. Latter part of the top 10 right in front of him. Chase Berta in the 18. Good weekend already. Picked up the win in the Jake CRA All-Stars Tour on Friday night. Had a good fast car. Made the redraw. Had the worst redraw, though. Pulled the eight. And uh, right now, Chase Bird is still running in eighth. But he's a young driver, 18 years of age. What a career he had as a youngster growing up as a young kid winning quarter midget races. And uh, has moved on. He races dirt now, some dirt late model or modified cars. And races on the asphalt. Won the Jake CRA All-Stars Tour Championship. Second place in the ASA CRA Super Series Championship as well. You know, I didn't know anything about his early part of his career, but, uh, you know, ever since I started seeing him come here to Winchester, I mean, he likes this place. Uh, he gets around here good, and uh, he's had a lot of success. So uh, don't be surprised if he's not up front all day here in the 400. One final reminder to those of you watching on our social media channels. We're about to end the social media live preview from Winchester. If you want to check out the rest of this race, go to tracktv.com, Racing America, or MidwestTour.tv, and check out all of the action as we heat up right here in turn number one to the inside. Garcia making a move on Stroop, and he pulled that off perfectly. Yes, he did. And I think Dakota, his car is going away a little bit. I don't know if air pressures are up, just getting loose or what, but... Uh, I think he kind of made it a little easier for Jake to get by. 60 laps now completed. Watching 6th, 7th, and 8th right there. 8th place Chase Burton, 9th Noah Gregson. He starts to close.